Hello guys and welcome to this Zoom clone application. So in this video, we're going to build just a simple application that is going to mutate the way we can make a video call from an Android phone to another Android phone. What you can see on my screen now is uh, you can see my emulator. That is why you cannot be able to see my face because this emulator here is making use of the, uh, the phone camera which does not have a background or an environment. But from my phone, you could see my face and you could see where I'm staying and uh, doing my recording. You could see me. So once I say hi or wave my hand, you could see the transmission. So we're going to be doing this with React Native Web ROTC. And we are going to be also making use of PHJS to actually build this. And guys, it's not going to be a, a more standard application. It all depends on the comments I get. If I get like up to 100 comments demanding like I should do a full stack uh, a Zoom clone application, I, I don't mind doing it. I'm going to do it just to make everybody happy. But before you proceed, you're going to make sure you hit that like button and also the, the subscribe button. So guys, one big thing that I would like you to support me on is to support me. You're going to see my PayPal link on the description because I want to make more quality and more fine videos. So you could see my screen brightness is not really that appreciable, but if I get what I want, trust me, I'm going to be making a very good and a very good interactive and very good quality video. So once again, make sure you hit that like button and also the subscribe button and let's move ahead. So guys, before we begin, let's kind of walk through some things that we are going to need. First of all, you need to make sure that you have this boilerplate that uh, we have in the GitHub repository. The link is on the description or you can also see it in the comment section in case I forget to put it in the description. But let me kind of show you the links that we are using. So we are using this boilerplate from the GitHub repository and we're going to be using PJS. We are going to be using making pretty use of everything here. And also we are going to be making use of React Native Web ROTC. And in case you don't understand how to set up Web ROTC, you, I have a blog post I made about it. I'm also going to put that link in the description and also uh, why I had to uh, compile this post is because sometimes when you use web ROTC your app can crash so this post or this blog post is going to help you to set up web ROTC on a new application when you initialize a new application with react native so let's get started before we start working with our peer sorry before we start working with react native peer JS, we need to make sure we have a peer server set up. So over here, you could see I have a node API and also here is where the React Native app is. And inside this node API, we have some couple of dependencies that we're going to install quickly. So let's just go ahead and do that. And the first dependency we are installing is the ExpressJS. I'm going to install. Oh, sorry, guys. This is inside the application. I'm going to go back to the API. Oh, sorry guys for that. So I'm gonna go over to the API and inside here I'm gonna ins install Express and also going to install Peer and UID. Let's go ahead and install Express. Also install Morgan, but let me just install Morgan as a dev dependency. Let's install Peer UUID for now and hit enter. And the next one is we have to install socket IO, but you have to install this version 2.3.0. Now we can go ahead and install Morgan lastly, but I'm going to install that as a dev dependency. So these are the packages that we're going to be uh, using in this tutorial. So let Morgan finish for, okay, Morgan is done right now. So hopefully when I close this and reopen that, uh, we should see Morgan as dev dependency and also Nodemon. So I forgot to tell you that you also have to install Nodemon. Then you have to create a file called server.js. And inside the server is where we are going to be configuring everything that we need in our server side. Because we are going to need uh, the PJS to actually use what is called Express PR Server to give us a random ID for each user that will be using our server. So there are, also, there are also some ICU servers you can actually use. Maybe you want to build a much larger scaling application. You can use custom servers or you can decide to build your own using the Node.js. But well, let's go ahead and uh, start. So I'm going to require Express. 
I'm also going to require HTTP, usually pronounce this wrong. I'm also going to uh, require the socket that we installed. So the socket of IO, which is going to require the socket. Then we have to require the Morgan, but let's just allow the Morgan to be here, but I don't think we are gonna uh, need that. Maybe uh, depending on the response I get to make this a much larger application. So I uh, will definitely do that. See if I get a, uh, up to like 50 comments demanding I do it, sure I will do it. So this one is peer, and inside this peer, we are gonna grab the Express peer server. That's what we are gonna be using to generate a, a random ID for each PJS connected from our client. Then I'm gonna initialize the Express. Then let's go ahead and uh, create our custom uh, ID. So custom ID, we can just uh, use a random JavaScript ID to generate an ID. So let me just quickly create one. So this one is called custom generation function. But what you can see here, you can actually see it on this same blog post over here because at the end, we also showed how you could uh, create a very simple PRJS server. So when you come to this tutorial, you could see all the steps that we are doing here. You could find it there, but let's just go ahead for explanation's sake. Then Whenever we uh, have our random ID, we can now create a peer server. So an peer server is going to take the express peer server and it's going to take in the server that we created from our socket. So let's just go ahead and create one server from our socket. So that will now lead us to create a new variable called server, which is going to take that http.create server and we can pass the app. So this is supposed to be beneath this then we can now connect our socket to that server so we can just reference the socket so this is just the simple thing we have to do and here we pass that server because that server is what we're going to be using to actually meet and also use the PJS concurrently and once we pass here there are some couple uh, settings we can set the debug to true the path to we can set the path to custom path. Maybe you're using a custom path. You can just set it, but here we can now put the generation ID, generate client ID to custom generation function. So this is a custom generation function that we created at the top. So that's how we can create a simple peer server and we can just use this path. So this path will be uh, making, uh, be used from our client to actually reference this peer server that we are um, making use of here. So the path here is just the normal local path, but for this one from the client, you must reference this. So whatever you call it, maybe you change the name, you must make that to be so. And then lastly, we have to now use our socket. We could say io.onConnection. We can just give it a function and get a socket. Then let's just uh, for now consider log socket connected. And beneath that, we can create a random, uh, sorry, not a random port, but our port, we can say process.env.port, or we could use 5,000 in case we don't find any ports. Then we can go ahead to listing to that port and give us a callback of console.log. Uh, we could say server is running on ports. So we can just pass that port. So we are done creating the Node.js server. So the next thing for us to do now is to go over to the application and start working on our application. Let's close this down and go over to the Zoom folder. So in the, in the Zoom folder, you can come over to the package.json. Let's go through some packages that we're making use of. So most of these packages here are just like uh, React Navigation and all those things. But the remaining important ones are we are making use of uh, the uh, socket IO clients, the Redux, React Redux, because we're going to be using Redux to actually set our streams. And uh, we're also making use of React Native Web RTC. So for all these, most of these packages here, it doesn't really make sense. But we're also going to be making use of the React Native PRJS because that's what we're going to be using for. So for this PRJS over here, this is uh, basically for the web. I installed this while I was trying to see whether we can work together with this, but it didn't work. So 
most of the packages there you don't actually need it so maybe in the boiler plate i can still remove it but if you find it just know that you don't have to bother yourself on that so right now let's go ahead and create some things first of all we need to make sure our redox is connected i have a nice redox tutorial but let's still go ahead and make use of redox over here so we have already our store imported and here i'm going to create a folder called store and I'm going to quickly create an index.js file and inside there I'm going to import some couple of things like crystal from Redux. So if you have the boilerplate you don't need to worry yourself. So we have the crystal and also the apply middleware. So guys don't forget to hit the like button and also the subscribe button and we have to import the thong from Redux thong. We also have to import the middleware, sorry, create our own middleware, not import the middleware. So we are going to be using the thong, which is the middleware for us to make use of our sign functions. Then we have to uh, create another folder inside here called reducer. And also we have to create another folder called actions. So in this reducer, we are going to have a file called index.js as well. And it's kind of long I connected this but let me just kind of say uh, we have the root reducer which is going to so I had to check like I said it's been long so this one uh, we have to first of all import from redox and also create uh, sorry combine reducer not create reducer then we also have to export default combined reducers. Then combined reducers is going to be accepting some couple of reducers that we are going to be creating. But for now, let's just go back to the store and make sure we have everything set up. So this one is called the reducer roots and we have to import the, import the roots reducer from the reducer. Then we have to just give this a type of the initial state our structure is going to have. And then we can now create a general store, which is going to create store and is going to accept the root reducer, the initial state. And here we are going to use the apply middleware. And inside the apply middleware, we have to spread our middleware that we created. And finally, we just have to export default store. So that's how we can just connect our reducer to our reducer. Then for us to make use of reducer, we have to create a, a reducer. So I'm going to call this one video reducer. So it's just going to take the structure of our initial state. It's just an empty object and we just have to export default. And here we just have to use the switch statement and we are accepting the state as the initial state and also we are going to accept some couple of things like the type and also the payload and then we have to switch with the type and we can return just a default of return state so that's how we can use uh, the root reducer then over here we now have to combine that reducer so i can just uh, simply say video reducer which is going to take in the video reducer so hopefully that should import that automatically when I hit enter. So we are done connecting with the Redux and everything is going to work fine once we run our application. Inside this, our actions folder, we have to create a file called types. So these are gonna be the types of actions that we are gonna be dispatching. So we have the first one to be the join charts. So it's just going to be a text join charts. We also have a second one of uh, add stream. So this one is going to be adding some couple of, uh, sorry, adding the stream to our own personal stream for the current device using the stream. So I, I didn't put a const over here. We also have uh, uh, my stream. And also we have uh, add remote stream. 
and this ad remote stream is going to be coming from the other client which is connected remotely to our stream using the stream id that we use to make a call to the client back so right now let's go ahead and run our server to see whether it's working perfectly and uh, let's kind of check back in the api to make sure that every other thing is connected so we are going to be running a, a simple script over here which i forgot to add which is the dev and it's going to make use of the node mon and we are going to run the server file so hopefully when we run our server everything should run fine so we could say npm run dev and it's going to connect with port 5000 and switch into your application folder and uh, you can run your own android and let's allow that to bundle our application and start immediately and right now you can see our application running effectively so if you followed everything that we did initially you'll get at this point but i'm going to change this component to a class-based component so i'm going to say class app so sorry for that extends react dot component for some reason i want to change it like that but we will soon get there then over here we just have to close this and render in the render we can return let me just return now for now to make sure everything is fine and then we can just export default app and going back into this place we now have to put down some couple of designs but before we proceed there is something very important that we're going to be using in order to assess our camera or assess our device uh, streams and that's that's going to be coming from the web rtc and let's go ahead and grab that line of code so over here if you come over to the uh, github repository of web rtc you could see some examples they kept over there so that's exactly what you're going to be using to make use of our streams so if you could see it can assess our media device and it could get the video and then it, uh, we can assess that through this stream let's go ahead and copy everything from here to this point and i'm going to come back over here then inside this application i'm going to just uh, put down a constructor props and uh, we are going to be using super props so why i did this is because you're going to be using react uh, redux so i can say component did mount i can just paste those lines of code and that is okay so when we go ahead and uh, console.log stream we should get some permission requirement from our phone in order to access those stream so hopefully uh it says okay it couldn't find media devices and that's because we've not yet imported that so uh, you just have to go to the top over here copy these lines of code paste it but we are not going to be making use of everything there so the ones that we don't need we can just get rid of it so let me just be careful we don't need this one and we don't need this one so that's it I think we also need the ROTC view in order to display our stream ROTC view so this one is going to be used to display our stream and right now when we come over to application hopefully we should yes you could see we get uh, those streams over here so why you see uh, we don't we don't have a permission yet we don't have a permission requirement is because uh, we've already allowed that when we open our application so if you're running the app for the first time hopefully you should get those permissions but as for me i have already allowed those permission from this zoom application so that's why i didn't get to see those things all right now let's go ahead and start with uh, connecting our redox and also creating our actions but before we connect our redox let's go ahead, let's go ahead and create our action so i'm going to call this video actions So at the top here, I'm going to import the types that we put down in our types.js file. So the first one is, I think, add stream. Then we have my stream. Then we also have add, okay, I didn't add the peer ID, but let's just leave that. Then we have add remote stream. And I think that that should be okay. Then, Beneath that, 
we have to now construct our own RPRY in order to make use of our socket. So this is the URI that we're going to be using. So if you want to get your URI, you're going to make use of your IP address. So let me just type down IP config. And when I type down IP config, you could see your own IP address from the IPv4. So just go ahead and grab this and uh, make use of it. So we are going to just export a cons of app URI, which is going to be HTTP. And we can paste that and I'm, I can now put 5000. That is our port. Then at the top here, we have to import the IO from socket.io client, which we have already installed. We also have to import a peer from React native peer JS, and that solves it. So then down here, we now have to create a couple of actions that we're going to be using. So the first, the first action we are going to use is just called join room. So I can just call this join room. And this is the only action that we're going to need in order to join. But do not forget that this is an assign function and you have to bring in the dispatch in order for us to dispatch to our store. And uh, one more action we are going to create, but not really an action, just like a method is called uh, a function called connect to new user. So this, this one is just connect to new user. And uh, let's proceed further. Let's go over to the app.js file and make use of those methods that we created or those actions. I mean, one single action that we created from our video action. I'm just going to quickly import that. So going back, I think we're on the same level. You can go into the source, store, and our actions. I can now reference the video actions. And here we can just bring in the join room. I'm done here. Uh, before you go down once more, you have to just make sure you import something from React Redux. And that is called the connect. So down here, you can just wrap this as a higher order function. So we can just pass down our connect. And our connect is going to now connect to our reducer. Remember that we have one reducer, which is uh, the video reducer. So you can just uh, put map state to props, which is going to be a function. But here I can just use structuring to get just that single state. And uh, here I can just pass the video. Then down here, you can just pass the map state to props and you can just pass down your method inside this object. So in case you have multiple methods, just go ahead and pass that. And let's see if an application still refreshes, everything works perfectly, except that we can't see our streams, which is not a problem. Uh, we get, we got some blow right now. Say so I couldn't find password require. And I think I'm importing something from the wrong side. Mm, React Native PJS. Okay, everything is working fine. I don't think we have an issue. Let's go ahead and make use of the actions that we just brought in and coming down to this place instead of instead of us to console.log this, we can now use this dot props. This dot props dot join room and we can just pass that stream. And let's go over to the video action. So here I can now grab the grab in the stream. And we are done with everything except that we have not connected the socket. And uh, we have to make sure that we do that and also connect to our server from our application before we proceed. So for us to connect to the socket, it's go just going to be very simple as well. Uh, beneath here, we just have to, uh, let me just put a comment called socket config. So if you followed in my Amazon crash course, you can actually see how we use socket a lot to, uh, I think in my WhatsApp crash course, I mean WhatsApp chat application, that I did in one of the last video, you could see how we use socket to actually send and receive uh, data. So I'm just going to just give this a const of socket, which is going to use the IO and it's gonna just use the app URI. And here we have to force new and set that to true. 
then we can say socket dots on connection so we can just console.log connected client so hopefully when we save this and go back to this here you could see automatically we get connected because that is to signify that our socket is actually working perfectly and we can now use this socket uh, string over here to make use of whatever we want to do and one more thing we have to do is to connect our PR server because we've uh, successfully connected our socket and let's go ahead and connect our server so we could say PR config so the PR config is just going to be very simple as well you can just create a PR server which is going to take the peer and here we can just pass on defined so actually there are some couple of parameters that peer server accepts the first one is the host so maybe you're using a you are using a uh, cpanel hosting just know that this is not going to work i try to uh, speak with my cpanel hosting service whether it's going to work they said no except i upgrade to vps so if you're using VPS, you can have ability to have incoming bounce and also outgoing bounce connection. Except you have more that better way, you can also tell me in the description. Then we can set the secure to false because we, because we are not using the HTTPS and set this port to the port of your server as well. So I'm just going to use 5000. So I'm just going to grab 5000 over there. And the path, remember that we're using a part of my peer. So whatever you gave your path, over in your server so let's say in this your server whatever you give your part over here is same thing that we are going to put over there so let's just use my peer so that everyone can understand and for some reason let me just remove this and uh let's go ahead and say peer server dot on error we just want to console.log that error so let me just remove this i just want to show for that error so in case we have an error we should automatically see that error. So guys, let's go ahead to open a connection and actually use this stream that we are passing from our application from our app.js over here to actually make use of the stream over here to display the streams of each current device that's actually making use of this app. So that's just going to be very simple. All you just have to do is to set my own stream and we have to just dispatch a type of my stream with a payload of stream. So make sure you spell everything correctly. So pardon me for that error, but I just want to create something called room ID, which every device is going to use, and it's just going to be a random U, uh, U, we usually call it UUID, but just a random ID. And coming back to this app, if you can observe here, I added some uh, kind of stylish things, which is very simple. You can just uh, like make use of a flex container, the top make use of 50% height, the bottom make use of a scroll view because you're going to uh, display streams over here, both the remote streams and also the streams that we actually called from our remote uh, peer server, which is very simple. And let's just go ahead and uh, display this stream that we actually pass here and that's just going to be very simple so inside this view you just have to make use of the stream so we can say this dot props dot video dot my stream we have to check whether it is null or not so if it's not empty because the default value is going to be empty we can use the rotc view and we can set the stream url I think the stream you are yes the stream URL to dot props dot video dot my stream dot to URL. So make sure that two is small caps, but URL is a little uh, is all caps. Let me just increase this font size a little bit because uh, let me use 24. I think that will be much better, which is fine. And coming back in our video reducer here, we have my stream, but this is not exactly what we need for now. We just need a stream, which is just a null value. Okay, I think 
we can use my stream. My stream, I think this, this looks better because we can pass the stream over here, but in the reducer, we can use my stream. So we can look for the case of my stream. So we can say the case of my stream, case of my stream, which is going to return from the state. my stream and we can just set that my stream to the payload of the stream that we are actually passing through then coming back in our app before we save that let's go ahead and give it a style of height and width so give it the width of our container that is our screen size and also a height of 40 percent so format that properly and save we should be able to see our device each device should be able to see each stream from the device camera. So right now, let's go ahead and use this stream to actually make a call to other streams and uh, uh, get other streams to first display before we can be able to use our stream and display on other streams, streams, which is just what you're going to do. So before we do that, we need to first of all open a connection. So we have to open a connection to our server so we could say peer server dot open on i think it's called on open let me quickly check that uh, it's called on open which is correct so whenever we open a connection is going to return a random id and we can inside this callback we can just emit to our back end call join room so which is going to join with the user and also is going to pass the room id so we want every user to be collectively in one room that's why we are using a fixed room id fixed room id so whenever the user connects we have to go over to our server and over here we just have to use the socket dot on join room so here we are joining with the room id if you could remember and also the user id and we have to set a callback and the callback is just going to be uh, sending uh, some parameter broadcasting some parameters to other users that this user has actually joined so in case we have multiple users already joined we have to broadcast to other users whenever a new user joins so first we have to join that current user to the room ID and then we can now broadcast to the room ID and emit an event of user connected and we can pass the user ID that just connected so this is for new users so whenever a new user connects you see we use the user id to actually connect so because the peer server is connected to one server the peerjs is connected from this client to one server and that server already gave us a unique id that we are actually using here to notify every other user that a user is connected we are going to use this user id to actually uh, make a call to other users then use peerjs to return the calls from other users first to this device and let's go ahead and do that so over here we have to just listen to a socket connection so whenever user connects we get the user id and inside here we can now connect to new user so if you can remember we added this function idea called uh, connect to new user so it's going to accept the user id the stream a stream and also a dispatch so like i said this stream is coming from uh, uh, other users not actually the, this current stream because don't worry we are still getting to uh, making use of this current stream to display to other users but for now we have to grab other streams and populate other streams on this device so the way we can do that is here we just have to grab the user id the stream and we can get the dispatch so this dispatch is going to be used to store these uh, streams, uh, streams in our uh, reducer
which is uh, something very small that we're gonna do. So, but first we need to make a call. So we we could say, uh, how do we do this? Uh, we need to make a call with the user ID and also the stream. So we can use that stream to actually grab the values that we want. So first of all, I can just call with the peer server dot call the user ID. So calling back the user that just connected. So the way we can now send back the stream from the user connected with the stream of the other users is at the top here. Uh, at the top here, we can just say, <clears throat> we can just say here, receive, let's just call this receive a call. So we could say peer server, let me just scroll down server.on call which is going to take on the call and it's going to answer that call after we connect it's going to answer that call with the stream and what we just simply have to do uh, is to stream back the call so we can say uh, let's just give a, a comment of let me stream back the call so we can say call dot on stream. So we can get the stream and we can just dispatch a type of add stream. So this add stream is going to go back to the user that lastly connected. So we that lastly connected. So we can just pass that stream. So we don't yet have an add stream uh, condition for our reducer. And let's go ahead and do that quickly can say case of add stream so it's going to return sorry guys for that it's going to return from the states uh, we have to add something called streams which is going to be an empty array so we could say the streams is now uh, first of all we could Pray state of streams, and then we can now add the new stream that we received back from all other streams. So when we've added this stream, we now have to and display it over here. So the way we can do that is I can let me just okay, let me just kind of do this this way so we could say this is equal to this dot props dot video. So we have the streams. Uh, let's kind of consider log the streams to make sure that we are able to get streams from other users. So let's refresh. I think we've already gotten it. So if you could see here, we already have one stream, one stream connected. So whenever we connect here, we should get the stream from my device over there. So let's just allow this to finish. So we already have a single stream and a uh, I don't know why this is delaying. So let me kind of reopen the application again. So open the zoom back. So you could see we have back the stream from my device. We are getting it on this current device on our screen. And right away, let's go ahead and display that stream on, on this uh, red container, which is down there. So the way we can do that is we have to replace this map that we have here. So I'm just going to replace this with the streams. But first, I need to make sure that the streams is greater than zero. So I can say streams.length is, is uh, greater than zero. So once it is greater than zero, we have to return that stream or else we just give it a null value and that should solve it. So uh, hopefully, when I connect on this device, I should be able to get my stream. So let me reopen. Just that we've not yet displayed that. So here, yeah, change that to stream. And inside this one, uh, you can just quickly grab this. And uh, you can paste it down. And all you just have to do is to format that prettily. Uh, in a nice way, I say prettily. Sorry for that. So I can just change this to 180 with and for the height i can just leave it same way it is so hopefully 
we should be able to see my own stream. So I'm actually getting back my stream, which is totally wrong. Uh, let me kind of refresh this again. So guys, sorry for that. That's because I'm using my current stream to display that. So this is supposed to be just stream. So let me clear everything here. So we have the stream dot to URL. So hopefully uh, I should be able to see one stream that is and reopening that you could see that the application is working perfectly. So one of the issues I'm having is just that my machine is not uh, really responding the way it should. But as you could see, everything is working perfectly. And once I connect with this device, all I just get back is the stream from other users. So if we have multiple streams, it's going to populate in the streams array and we are going to have multiple streams. So this red background over here is for the stream of other users, not actually for us. So what I'm gonna do now is to make use of this bluish background and display the stream from this device to my phone. So that's what I'm, I want to do. So uh, let's say we have other people connected and uh, that's how they can actually see that we have connected on the same chat, connected on the same chat. And let's quickly go ahead to do that. Back into our video actions. So whenever we make a call, remember that we are making a call with a single user ID. So we can just say call dot on stream, which is going to get the removed video stream that just that you just making the call. Then we can check whether this remote video stream actually exists. If it does it is, we just have to dispatch with a type of add remote stream and then we can pass the payload of uh, remote video stream and going to our reducer so inside our reducer over here we can just say case of add remote video stream so if you observe my voices are repeating because right now there is a transmission from uh, the the device that is making a call to my own device so my device is actually picking the call from my PC and is speaking it out on my device. So I can just return from the state, remote streams, and we can spread the, any remote stream that we have initially. So I can just quickly add that. So we have remote streams, and I can just set that to an empty array and uh, we have a payload that we got from our stream so make sure that everything is set perfectly from the remote stream so i i just want to allow this to be to be speaking a little so that you can actually see that everything is connected and right now let's go ahead and display the remote stream on my own mobile device so if you come to the app.js uh, down here So I'm just gonna mute, I'm, I'm going to mute the audio because I don't want the audio to be disturbing us. I'm just going to scroll up and set the audio to false and save and refresh. We have remote streams so we can grab the remote streams from, let's call remote streams. And let's kind of make sure that everything is working perfectly. So we have remote streams. And let's save and give it a refresh again. So you can see how uh, this is kind of a little bit slow, but don't worry, we're almost done. So you could see the remote stream over there, we actually have it. So all I can just do is simply uh, come down again. So let me just check so when I come down so we could check whether the remote stream is greater than zero 
remote streams dot length is greater than zero. So if it is greater than zero, we just have to make use of that to display it or else we return a null value. Then inside here, we just have to copy this. But before we add that, we have to make sure we use the uh, map to actually map to the array of remote streams. And then we can return the index. So this stops here, we can just spread that and give this a key of index because we don't want a crash. I think also we have to give the key of index. Okay, we, we already have one. So let me save. So when I save this and uh, everything connects back on my phone, I'll be able to see uh, these uh, camera. I don't know what to call it, whether it's yellow, but just know that I'll be able to see it while this device on the PC is able to see uh, my videos my videos from my mobile phone. So uh, let me refresh. So right now on my device, I can be able to see this camera and also on my screen at, at my PC, you can, maybe, you can be able to see me because this recording is coming, this stream is actually coming from my device, from my phone. So another thing you could you could, uh, uh, you could notice is that we actually made a mistake here. So make sure you, change this to length and that should solve any error you have. So guys, we have actually come to the end of this uh, tutorial and you can see how we did everything with my KJS and also with uh, React Native Web ROTC and how we actually connected everything with Socket IO. So guys, don't make sure to, sorry, do make sure to hit the like button and also the subscribe button. So guys, once more again, I would like you to give me a support my PayPal link is on the description. Just go ahead and support me. And uh, you can also buy me a coffee. But don't forget to hit the like button and also the subscribe button. And if you want me to do something more advanced like Zoom, like I promised, I'm willing to do it. But uh, it depends on the amount of comments I get. Like if I get up to 50 comments, if I get up to 100 likes or 50 comments, if I get up to 100 likes or 50 comments, uh, Sorry, 100 likes and 50 comments. I'm sure I'm going to do it. So, guys, once again, thank you for watching. Make sure you hit the like button and also the subscribe button. And see you on my next...